The second mode of contraction that an athlete should train is the concentric mode or the lifting or overcoming mode. That is the one that I'm probably going to have to give you the least amount of information because pretty much everything is out there. It's pretty straightforward. It's just basically what we normally refer as lifting weights. Now, I still use various methods depending on the athletes I'm working with uh, and during the phases. Like during the accumulation phase, the goal is to have a higher volume of work. So to increase resiliency, to increase muscle mass. Depending on the athlete you're working with, you will use a time under tension of E e either 20 to 30 seconds if you have someone who's very fast switch dominant, very explosive, very competitive, or as high as 40 to 60 seconds. If you have an athlete who is more introverted or less experienced, less explosive, or someone who needs to build a lot more muscle tissue. Now, and you can use methods just such as rest pause, superset, any bodybuilding methods really. Uh, now if I work with more advanced athletes who already have plenty of muscle mass in that accumulation phase, we will use a shorter time under tension, 20-30 seconds, so sets of 4-6 to six reps or using rest pause with heavy weight, stuff like that. The more experience you are, the more muscle mass you have, the heavier you go even on the accumulation phase. The, the smaller you get, the more muscle you need, the less experience you have, then the more longer the sets are because you need to build tissue and tissue is a matter of metabolic stress, so volume is important. Uh, then we move on to the intensification phase. Intensification phase uh, is where you will build the most strength, where you focus on lifting big weights. Of course, depending on the level, methods will differ, but my own personal favorites when I work with an athlete who is fairly highly developed, uh, the, my two go-to methods are clusters. Clusters use a weight that is roughly 85, 90% of your maximum, a weight you could normally get three reps with. And with that weight, you're gonna get five to six reps. How you do that is between every reps, you rest for 15 to 20 seconds. So let's say you're, ben you're bench pressing, I'm unracking the bar, I'm bench pressing, racking the bar again, resting 20 seconds, I'm unracking, bench pressing, so I do my five reps like that. The 20 seconds will allow me to get two or three more reps between uh, during my set. At first, the first time you do clusters, you might not be able to get more reps in because unracking and racking the bar will be tiring for you. But the more you practice it, the less detrimental it becomes and then your performance will shoot up. Now, clusters, in my experience, one of the methods that leads to the greatest strength gain, uh, like, a bobsleigh athlete I'm working with recently just did uh, a cluster of squats, getting seven reps with 500 pounds. So when I say that these guys need to be powerful and strong, that is an example. Not surprisingly, he is also the guy who ran the equivalent of a 4.27.40. So again, zero to 10 meter, it's squat strength. Okay, so that is a perfect example here. Now, that is, and, and my second favorite method when training concentric strength are waves. Either five, three, one waves or three, two, one waves. Now, a wave is three sets. You still have your rep, your, your rest intervals between sets. I will do, let's say, let's say I do a three, two, one wave. One wave is one set of three reps, then I rest three minutes. One set of two reps with more weights, I rest three minutes. One set of one rep with more weight, then I rest three minutes. If I was successful with all three sets, I move on to a second wave of three, two, one, slightly heavier than the first phase. Personally, what I do is that I start the first wave for three reps with the weight I use for two reps. So it's about 2.5% heavier. If I'm successful with the second wave, I attempt a third wave. Normally, that third wave should lead to a PR or 100% of your maximum, depending on your pro, uh, your, your selecting your weights. But few people will get three waves all the time. Two waves should be all the time, three waves only if you have a really good workout. Waves also very good at building strength. And if I'm more of a beginner, less experienced, I'm gonna use a five, three, one, five, three, one wave approach. So clusters, waves, my two favorite approaches when doing the intensification portion of concentric strength. That also allows me, if I really want to focus only on concentric, doing the lifts from pins. So I'm gonna do a bench press from the pins. So I'm training only the concentric, okay? You don't have to do that, but it's an option you can have. Then, during the explosion phase, this is where I'm gonna put more emphasis on Olympic weightlifting, 
on jump squat with about 20% of your squat maximum, on plyometrics, on medicine ball throws. I still will keep like a small amount of muscle building work to avoid detraining the muscles, but it's gonna be all about moving explosively and fast. So fast Olympic lifts, pretty much only concentric, very explosive, power snatch from the hang, power clean from the hang, power snatch from blocks, power clean from blocks. From the floor, there's no benefits for athletes. Uh, then gonna do plyometrics, depth jump, vertical jump, hurdle jumps, low squat foot jumps, medicine ball throws, anything that can be done very explosively. So it's all about first building the structure, then getting those structures strong, then getting those, that strength transitioning into fast strength or strength displayed explosively with the explosive work. So that's how I program uh, the concentric portion for athletes.